Hi everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and it is that time again to update you and have a little look at some goodies that I have been stockpiling for a little while. First of all I wanted just to say a huge thank you to everyone for their patience with the technical issues that I've been having. It seems to have been one thing after another in the last month or so and nearly every piece of technology I have has gone on the blink at some point. I would like to think now that we're at a stage where the uh, the audio and video quality on the actual videos on the channel is a lot better. I think I've got the autofocus thing sorted out and I feel that in the last few videos the, the sound quality has been a bit more consistent so I just want to thank you for sticking with me and being very patient with that but I think we're, we're on our way with that now anyway. Uh, the next thing is that we are at the stage where we are ready to vote on the subject of our next set of coffee videos. So from today you can jump over to the community tab on the channel and there will be a poll there. For those of you that can't get access to the community tab, if you jump over to the cave page on Facebook there will also be a poll there and you can pick your favourite. We've got some quite interesting things to choose from this time round and I'm really excited because I have really enjoyed this, this sort of whole idea and the fact that everyone's all involved and it's kind of like a team effort. So please, please, please go and get your vote in the poll and then that way you get a and what the money from the coffee fund is spent on. Brings me on to my next point, the coffee fund. When I first started with the cave stash, I, uh, it was really a, just a sort of like a pilot idea to see if it was a wee project that was going to work and I never really had the intention of keeping it on the community tab on YouTube for any length of time. It was just kind of like a starting point and that has been kind of echoed in some of the comments that are left under the video on how the cave stash works. I had some very positive comments, I had a few negative comments and I also had some constructive comments. So I've been kind of letting those digest and mill around in my, my brain and I am currently working on a different way to provide the items in the stash. One of the main stumbling blocks that I've come across is with the coffee page, it is a donations page and some people didn't like the use of the word donation because technically you are paying for a supply and I completely understand that. Never my intention to mislead anybody but it was also very restrictive because the increments on the coffee page run in three pounds so there's some items where I was struggling to balance what was a fair amount of money to pay for the item as well as the postage without overcharging someone or undercharging. So I'm currently working on that and uh, the, the kind of updated version of that with the stash in its new home will be available shortly and obviously I'll let you know when it's ready. So because of that the cave stash is going to be taking a, a short holiday. It's only going to be for a week or two until I sort out the, the, new, the new home for it and uh, we can go from there and it means we can start up our our videos again. Obviously we're not going to call them the coffee funded videos after this. I think we'll just call them the cave stash videos. The other thing I've been working away on and I know I have been quite quiet on social media apart from the videos since October finished and uh, it's because I have been working away on my website. It is nearly ready to, to go live which is quite exciting and it's really just a place for me to keep things all together. Available on there will be some free colouring pages or any resources that I have available for the videos. A little while back you may remember that I did a picture of a mahi mahi fish uh, and I did it in like a tutorial style and I provided line work and outlines, things like that for anyone that wanted to follow along. So it's really a central place for me to keep things like that. I'll also display some of my artwork on there for you guys just to have a nosy if you're looking for some inspiration for yourself. So that's that. The next thing is I've also started the prep for Cave Miss. The Cave Miss videos are well underway. I do, I do pre-record most of them and it's so active. Christmas time I can spend a little bit of time with my family because it's the only time of year where we are all together in one place and it just happens to be here. <laughs> so I will be looking for your input over the next week or two with some of the, the aspects of Cavemas. So once again and as always your input for that is really really appreciated. So the last thing we've got is a selection of items. I suppose it's an art haul really. Uh, it's actually been filmed in sort of chopped sections because I did some last month and never 
got around to posting the video. So uh, I've tried to kind of join it up and make it as cohesive as possible, but I just thought you'd like to be nosy and see what has arrived in the cave in the last few while. So we're going to nip over to the desk in the cave and you can have a little look at what has come through my mailbox in the last month or two. Let's get going over there. I have this little contraption here and this is a, a paintbrush drying stand and I've wanted one of these for ages because I tend to watercolour in bulk and I'll do maybe four or five paintings and run them all side by side and just work on a different one while the other one's drying. This is great for when I'm finished and it's really simple to use. So when you've finished cleaning your brushes the idea is that you can take your wet brush and you just slide it in between these, this sort of springy part at the top. Now obviously this is going to be standing upright so what it means is the water drips down from the tip of your brush from the bristles and it goes into this kind of little pot at the bottom and it just collects all the, the droplets and what that means is that the water isn't running back into the ferrule, ferrule feral ferrule and it, that's what wrecks your paint brushes because eventually it affects the adhesive that connects this metal part to the handle and they fall to pieces so it's really good for preserving your paint brushes in addition this particular one has a little sort of mesh insert and what it means is you can actually clean your brushes in the bottom of the pan so that'll take off all of the pigment and then obviously that sinks to the bottom and the same thing again you can just pop your brushes in and I have tried it with several different sized brushes if I just pop this in to show you I've got wee skinny handled ones like this and they fit in too and then I've got a really fat one as well and you can put them either side so the way I'm popping that at the back and basically the spring just kind of bends to accommodate them and then obviously you can just leave that and all your water's dripping down into your, your little pot at the bottom. I didn't pay a lot of money for this. Um, up until now, once I've cleaned my paintbrushes, I've been sitting this end on like a windowsill and putting down a piece of kitchen paper and having them sit like this so that the water is running away from the handle. Um, but what happens is I end up with really bent bristles at the bottom and I go through a lot of kitchen paper as well. So this is a much better method. Next up, I have been sent something in my P.O. box and this has come from the lovely Michelle and she has sent this all the way from the States which was so, so, so nice of her. Hello Michelle. She has sent me this colouring book and it is The Beauty of Horror by Alan Robert and I have always been a little bit curious of this colouring book and kind of wanted to try it but at the same time it's not something I would normally go for and I'm going to show you why. Uh, there's this lovely sort of red foil on the cover and I just think this is it's really, it's really pretty looking and it is a very sort of um, gruesome type of colouring book which is actually quite nice. It makes a change from all the flowers and fairies and things that are going on and I like the subject matter. It's just something a wee bit different because as you all know I do like things that are different. The reason that I've never purchased this before is the level of detail and the repeat patterns that are in the book. Uh, you can see, look, look how detailed this is and it's the same thing over and over which is not something that appeals to me and I kind of get Although it's not the same subject matter, I kind of get like a Millie Marotta vibe from Alan Roberts' um, artwork and it's all these tiny little, you know, lines that go run through everything. So th that's kind of like the way I feel about it, but Michelle was kind enough to send me this. So I've basically got this colouring book without any risk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to the, the waiting list of colouring books that you guys have been so, so generous to send. So we will be doing a page in this at some point. It will be into the new year now. So thank you again, Michelle. If anybody would like to see a full flip through of this, then just let me know. But it's quite an old book now and uh, there are plenty of other YouTube videos out there on this if you fancy a gander. This also came in my PO box, it's a little stripey envelope and it came with a letter and I'm just going to read the first part of the letter to you and uh, this came from Lioness Feather who is a, a watcher of the channel and uh, it says here, Dear Gem, several months ago YouTube recommended one of your scroller box unboxings to me. I checked it out and I have loved my regular trips to the cave ever since. While I freely admit that I often put your videos on to have your lovely voice and accent keep me company in the background while I do something else, 
and it says in brackets ideally art related but we can't have everything all the time I also do like to take the time to watch you create when I can I especially admire the way that you do your best to make your videos as accessible as possible personally I am a painter not a colorist but whenever I watch your coloring videos I feel like I could just pick up a pencil and join in that is such a lovely thing and I love getting handwritten notes like this this these like really brighten up my day and I did uh, email her back and say to her that the day that I picked this up from my PO box it was absolutely miserable it was dark it was chucking it down with rain and this really cheered me up so as a thank you as a thank you from lioness feather which there's no need for she sent me a few little goodies in this envelope and the first thing that she sent me is uh, it actually makes me laugh because it's tea everybody keeps sending me tea which i love by the way i uh, i enjoy my teas very much i'm particularly excited about this one which is called turkish apple and it's a bit like the the in fact the last two lots of tea have been sent when you open up this plastic bag it just smells amazing and i just want to kind of waft it about the cave a little bit <laughs> so thank you very much i am super excited and there's loose leaf teas and there's all sorts in here so this is going to keep me going for a little while the other thing that she has sent which i am also super excited about obviously on my Amazon wish list, I have a few sets of watercolour paints that I would like to get around to purchasing. And it just so happens that she owns some of these watercolours. And what she has done is she has sent me some paint dots of these different brands of watercolour. Not only that, she has included all the light fast ratings as well and the specific colour codes and names so that if I like them I can go and buy them. So this is awesome. This isn't a two second job guys. This is a lot of effort to go to to send someone a letter. So uh, my next watercolour weekend, which I'm hoping won't be too far away, I'm going to take the opportunity to put some of these to the test and just enjoy painting with uh, a new brand of paint. So once again, Lioness Feather, thank you ever, ever, ever so much because this is really nice and you're, I, I can't I always say it, I can't stop saying it but I love getting letters because things like that just cheer me up but this is exceptional so thank you very very much for taking the time to do this and I am particularly excited because there's a I like sap green <laughs> show me the green <laughs> and this is a little workbook and it's called How to Cross Hatch in Pen and Ink now this is by a, a, a lady called Brian the Girl and it's a little bit complicated because she is no longer Brian the Girl. Um, I follow her on Instagram and her artwork is absolutely stunning. She basically draws crosshatch pictures in in Pigma Micron. You can see some of her work there. And I just I admire it so much and it's something that I would love to work on because I do like a bit of hatching. So when she decided to bring out this little workbook, I knew I had to have one. One of the fascinating things about Brian is that she kind of tells her story, like her life story on Instagram as well as showing her artwork. And she is a very candid and honest person and that really appeals to me. She's recently changed her name and she ha she now goes by the name August. I will leave her Instagram uh, in the screen here somewhere just now, but I'll also leave it down in the description for you. Go and check out her artwork. It is amazing and read her story. Um, she, is, she is an exceptional human being and I really, really like her. So this little book, I would really like to have a go at just working my way through this workbook to see if I can improve my cross hatching skills, which is something that I'm okay at it, but I could I would like to take it to the next level. So if that's something that you would like to see in a video, you can let me know. I did ask her permission um, if it was okay to show her book in a video, and she said absolutely, which is just the nicest thing ever. So that is the first little thing that I'm quite excited about, and it's so cute. You could put that in your pocket and take it with you, and just do a page if you had a spare five minutes on the train or you know that kind of thing so that's number one so next up is this little package and I've not actually opened it yet and this is something I've been talking about for a while on the channel and uh, this there seems to be a free gift of some description in here but what I have bought is rice paper and many many moons ago when I started my watercolor journey I learned that the watercolor paints that I had which are the Gansai Tambi paints. They are actually different to traditional 
western watercolours and they're really designed for using on rice paper. So here I have some rice paper with uh, quite, a, quite a nice little design on the packaging. I've also got a panda key ring which is super cute as well. And they have also sent me, I'm loving these little zip bags, these are great. I'm going to use these to keep stuff in. I think this might be a, a Japanese paintbrush, I would imagine that would be the idea. Yeah, I have one of these already. Look at that, that is really nice. It's got the little loop on the end and the 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 bristles are just absolutely fabulous. I don't really know what the bristles in this one are made of because there's no other information in the in the packaging. But this is um this is really nice. It's pretty. It feels nice too. So we shall uh, have to give this a shot at some point I think with the Gansai Tambi paints and just see what it does on this paper. I'm quite a, quite a paper geek. I do like my different types of paper and experimenting with paper. So I think this would be really interesting. I do just want to quickly take this out and have a feel. I have an idea in my head. It's been a long time since I've been anywhere near rice paper. And I think at the time I probably wasn't in a position to appreciate it from an art point of view. <laughs> so let's just have a, a look at it. It should be really thin. Yeah, and it's got a texture to it. I love this. Yeah, it's... I'm assuming that this is the back and that is very, very rough. I don't know if you can see that in the light, but that is a very textured surface. But the other side is much flatter. I really like the, the sort of handmade texture to it. I like the kind of, it's got slight imperfections in it and that's going to make for some really interesting painting. Now, I, ha I am not educated on rice paper at all. This is all completely new to me. So if anybody wants to volunteer some information, um, I also do a little bit of homework before we do a video on something like this. But I'm really pleased I got round to this. This was really inexpensive. I think I paid £6. And there's I think there's 50 sheets. Maybe even more. Does it tell me on my packaging? 60 sheets. There we go. So that's going to be another interesting video. I've got another experiment. <laughs> I bought this out of curiosity more than anything else and some of you will have seen it already and it is How to Draw Inky Wonderlands by Johanna Basford. I am um, I'm not sure how I feel about this. Being a person that draws and colours, I think it's quite an interesting concept. And for those of you that aren't familiar, the book is broken down into sections and it's basically a step by step on how on how to draw in Johanna's style. Um so I just kind of wanted to see what was in it and uh, it's very instructional I have to say it's quite comprehensive and she covers the things that she draws most so you know flowers there's butterflies and then she has an ocean section so kind of like her book Lost Ocean it's uh, it's very um it's very varied and I kind of like it. I don't know whether or not I would actually use something like this. As I say, being someone that draws already and I can understand as well that like, Johanna has taken a huge gamble in, in producing a book like this not knowing whether or not it's going to fly at all and I know where she's coming from because I mean lots of you tell me all the time that you love to colour but you can't draw or you don't want to draw or whatever and I think she's trying to bridge that gap for some people so uh, yeah I, I don't really know I might actually give this book away I think my drawing skills are at a stage where I don't really think I would get any benefit out of this book and although there are plenty of things to colour I have a, a multitude of Johanna's books uh, as well as a majillion other colouring books so um I, uh, I, don't, I don't know how to feel about this. It is a beautiful book. Again, if it's something that you'd like me to um, go into a bit more detail with, please just let me know in the comments. And the next thing, <laughs> this was given to me. Um, this is one of the Colouring Heaven magazines that are readily available in the UK. We, we can get them in our supermarkets and our um, news agents. And the <laughs> last month's was the Dark Crystal special. I, uh, I was born in the 80s, so this appeals to me no end. And it's just such a a beautiful colouring book. If you're not familiar with the Colouring Heaven colouring books, they are they come in, it's like a magazine format, so there's usually about 40 uh, single-sided images for you to colour. And the paper quality in these are absolutely fabulous. And they have a different theme every month. Sometimes it's by a specific artist. Sometimes it is, you know, a, a specific topic like fairies or forests or anything like that. But I, I really like these. I, I don't buy them every month and I don't subscribe to them because there's some where the, the artwork just wouldn't appeal to me. Uh, but uh, someone who knows me well found this and decided to buy it for me in the hope that I hadn't bought it myself. 
and this covers because it's under the Jim Henson tag it's actually several artists that are in this month and I my, one of my favorite artists is in here and I'm just going to find some of that artwork is it is in this book it's just absolutely fabulous but it's a really nice book so I'm quite keen to get started on that and because it's covered by different artists there are different styles and levels of detail in each of the pictures so if you're having a day where you're you know you're not that uh, not that bothered about spending a huge amount of time you can take some markers to something like this and produce a really nice piece of artwork and then if you've got a day where you're you know you've got a bit more time in your hands you can maybe do some of Jay Yoon Lee's things spend a bit more time over it with some pencil so yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased about this and it's nice that people think about you. <laughs> okay, next I have these. Now, as a colourist, I do not recommend these pencils in the slightest. They are very, very hard and Derwent have several other ranges of pencils that are much better suited to the the colorist rather than the artist the reason that i have bought these is that one of the things i want to do next year is i want to take my graphite drawings a step further and start doing my dog portraits and other graphite drawings that i do in colored pencil i do have a a, a small selection of the karen dash luminance pencils they are really really expensive they, these are expensive too but um, I wanted a sort of cheaper more accessible pencil to practice with first and one of the thing about these artist pencils is that the, that the pencils themselves are really really hard like they've got a really hard core so what those are really good for is putting in really fine details not so much for covering large areas so I thought I would treat myself to these they are second hand um, I didn't buy these new because they are hella expensive Ooh. Oh, pencils and I've had a little shot with them and uh, I think they're going to be perfect for what I'm what I'm looking for and the 72 set's certainly going to give me enough of the the Derwent colour range to get going with that so I'm quite excited to try these out I'm probably not going to do anything with them until January or February next year because I think we've got enough to be dealing with but I'm quite excited about these so if you would like to see a full review on these pencils you know I do quite in-depth reviews with uh, the products then feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll certainly add that to the ever lengthening list of videos for the channel okay the last thing's a bit of a funny one I, I had uh, I bought a few things on Wish it's not somewhere where I, I frequently but they have really good winter hats that are cheap and Mr. Gem loses hats like most people, you know, lose their something that's easy to lose, I don't know. Anyway, while I was on there I came across a few things and the first thing is this and I just love the box, it's, it is just super cute, this little unicorn on the front and it's one of these handmade glass pens, like a dip pen. Now I'm hoping you'll be able to see the colours on the handle there if I tilt it. It is just, even if you were never to use this, it is just an absolutely beautiful work of art in itself. I just think it's so pretty. So uh, I bought this in a little set and you can buy it with, uh, you can buy the pen on its own. And it comes with this weird little sort of bubbly stand thing. Which I just, And it's so that you can rest it when you're you're not using it you know if you need to take a break or whatever and uh, the set that I bought came with a little set of inks now these are supposed to be uh, sort of shiny iridescent inks but I've noticed that the pigment is it just all kind of collects so I think you're gonna have to give them a really good shake and uh, kind of you know do that a lot <laughs> to get it up and going so uh, this was just a, a little aside for myself so I will be testing this out in uh, an upcoming video just for fun I do have other dip pens anyway but I just wanted this pretty one and it's made of glass all of it's made of glass but apparently what happens is when you dip the nib in the the ink all settles into these kind of spiral parts here at the tip and it basically acts as a reservoir and I have had uh, quite a few interesting comments and feedback from other people that they hold a surprising amount of ink you know you're not you don't actually have to dip that frequently so I thought that would be really fun to try out and obviously this will work with my existing drawing inks that I have so that's uh, something to look forward to if you like that kind of thing I just think it's really pretty I just want to look at it I'm not even that interested in drawing or writing with it but there you go we can road test that at some point as well 
the other thing that I got in with this is just a, oh my goodness, this is just a conglomeration of stuff. Uh, this is purely for my own uh, curiosity, but I bought some UV resin and all the associated bits and bobs that go with it. I've got one of these tiny little UV lights as well and uh, a selection of different accessories and moulds. So there's one there that's um, like feathers and one for teeny tiny things. Now resin like this is usually used in jewellery making. I also had a glitter explosion. I bought some glitter and it's gone everywhere over everything. But uh, I've got quite a large selection of moulds there and these uh, little mica powders. So you can put these into the resin to, to colour it and make it sparkly. And it's just really a bit of fun for, for myself in my spare time. But I thought it might be something that you guys might be interested in seeing. So I have had a little shot. This was my very first attempt at uh, curing some UV resin. So I've got a tiny little, um, I don't even know what you would call that. But it looks like a little bead and I put some glitter in it. That was how the glitter explosion happened. It's so tiny, but it's, it's come out okay. And I tried one of the feathers. Now, obviously, you would put some sort of colour in this. But I just this was me just kind of like road testing. And I used one with the mica powder as well, which it came out kind of weird. But they're, they're quite cool. I don't know what I'm going to do with these things, but I just wanted to play with it and have a shot. So... That is quite interesting and all in all, I'm going to show you everything, I'm going to try and show you everything that I've got here. So these are like little glow in the dark um, sachets. Here is the offending glitter, <laughs> it's just outrageous. And here are all of the moulds that I've bought. So there's one there that's a, a kind of ring shape and I've got these semi-circular ones. So you know, you, you could make something dome shaped with these or you could make an entire sphere. This fit, bit fits inside. And there's a hole in the top, so you put your resin in the top and fill it up and you will get like an entire bowl shape, so you could put lots of things in that. Um, I got some smaller ones as well, there's there's an actual ring mould there as well as in like a finger ring. And uh, I've got these kind of like gem shaped ones as well. But just look at all these moulds, I mean there's loads of them, they're great big ones as well, that would be more like a paperweight I would think, you know that kind of thing. Um, and I've got these long thin ones which again I would think would be more pendants for necklaces but this entire set with all these moulds and then there's bajillions of them uh, this sort of uh, set of fixings and things if you want to make keychains and some spoons to mix your resin and some pipettes which to be fair I'm not sure of because I just steal them from the lab at work shh uh, so yeah but that whole lot came to something ridiculous like £30. Uh, the resin was the most expensive thing out of all of it and I've been told that this has got a really short, short shelf life so once it's open you need to get, get going with it. So again, uh, if anybody does UV resin crafts, let me know in the comments and uh, if anybody would like to have a go and let's have a shot in a video then again you know what to do you that's what that comment section's for but this is a buttload of stuff it really really is and i have nothing to gauge it against to be fair but the stuff works i mean i don't know what the quality is like because i've nothing to compare it to but it does work so that is a lot of stuff for for 30 pounds Anyway, that is all for this whole video. I hope you've enjoyed coming on this little adventure with me today. This is just, oh, this is too chaotic for my liking. Um, always welcome your comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and we'll see you really soon back in the cave for another video. Have a good day, everyone, and bye for now.